mostly on Alan Wake. I'm haunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. <sighs> it's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported <sighs> kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you're lying. You're suffering from various Earth. symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Just, Just let, let go. go. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Alan Wake. And as usual, this is leaving me with far more questions than answers. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Why, right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. There's a typewriter in my room. He claims that it's the shock of my wife's death, but no one else has referenced that. The police, everyone we've talked to, has referenced her being missing. They acknowledge that, but they haven't talked about her being dead. He's the only one to say that. And the fact that, look, I'm just doing some tinfoil hat conspiracy theory right now. He's wondering where I am. But look, he has a typewriter and a stack of papers in my room. The kidnapper wanted that manuscript. For all I know, this guy's trying to get his hands on the manuscript as well. Although we still haven't seen what exactly his role in this is. This corridor is for patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. So these doors are all kept locked, are they? Anything over here? Nothing but a scary wood-carved bear, and... Hmm, okay, let's interpret this. It almost looks like someone being taken up in a tornado, or... Maybe if we invert the perspective, someone's sinking into an abyss. Alright, never mind me. You'll have to wait for me sometimes. This is one of those games where you can't walk at the same pace as someone you're following. Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations. Paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, 
an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Hey, Doc. Where did Alice drown? I mean, if we never were at the cabin at Cauldron Lake. Answer me that, will you? Yeah, I definitely think... If he is our analog for Ben Horn, I think this guy definitely knows more than he's letting on. Of course, without access to other characters, we don't know if others have seen the destruction that's been around town. I mean, one look at the visitor center should tell us exactly what's happening here, right? Or at least get enough for people to believe me. Oh, these games where you have to keep tapping the W key. I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now, we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After oh, look. all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. Hartman obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into myself. the palms of my hands to stay you focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. I noticed something while he was talking. Look at the way the wind blows the branches on the trees. And I could swear I actually can see the light on the side of the lodge, which, by the way, this is an absolutely beautiful place. I can actually see the lights dim as if clouds are passing in front of the sun. Oh, this is such a gorgeous game. I almost wish this game had been made more now, because I feel like if it were made now, well, A, there'd be a photo mode, and B, there'd probably be a free roam. Alright, let's go see what this guy has to say. The sooner we put up with his nonsense, the sooner we can get back to figuring out what's going on here. Although I will say, playing this game now, well, it's really doing a good job of actually making the player question their sanity, or at least what's going on here. Normally in mystery games like this, we know from almost the beginning, and it's just a matter of figuring out where this is all going. Here, I mean, the story seemingly contradicts what it previously set up at the start of each new episode, leading us constantly asking these questions. Look, look, we're starting to see the light on the side of the building fade. Uh, are we going to get to experience the storm? Let's go inside. Uh, hello? Uh, here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. I don't remember saying that. 
Wars, Man versus Nature, it's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. They are quite nice, though. Moose, Bison. Scary, They're so cool. Scary, scary. <laughs> Emerson. I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on... Video Elbow games. Strike. Ooh, it's yeah. trash, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small yeah. creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Is that a little bit of uh, self uh, self deprecating humor? Come, Alan, this way now. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. Welcome to the Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask family and friends to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy or periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patient's need for privacy and personal space. And especially when they're engaged by their creative processes. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems, and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy, trademark, and its sister method, the flow, work best when you are actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. I wonder if you're not just trying to siphon people's work. My rheumatism's killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers. Odin and Tor. They had a... How should I put this... A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, oh, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being ah. crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me, 
about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula, local ingredients, medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed leather patches on the elbows. That's not very rock and roll. Tom just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was, what were they? <laughs> Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, a god. Nightmare shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. <laughs> She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, uh, So tired. Built the farm close to the lake. A place of power. All right. Wow, I actually really, really like that. Uh, first of all, I just really like these guys on a personal level. Like, this is exactly the kinds of side characters that Hi. Twin Peaks would do. Uh, they do have a point. You gotta be crazy to interpret what's going on around us. I mean, a rational mind just isn't equipped for this. And I feel like... In all of that, I mean, they basically just told me everything that's going on here. Listening to the two crazy guys actually sitting here when we could have just left them to their ramblings. Basically, they've told us everything we need to know. After all this time, the lake is a place of power. A place of power for creative types. A power that they themselves were able to tap into as a band with the farm being so close to the lake. But... She always takes something, something in return. Maybe that's the idea. In exchange for human creativity, this being, whatever she is, is, I, I guess, able to incorporate that into her power. All right, well, let's have a move on. All right, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not done appreciating this yet. Listen to the rumble of thunder, that gray lighting outside. Ah, oh, this place is beautiful. And there's a manuscript page on the table in there. Hang on, how do we get over there? There must be some way. I'm a bad dream, and you can't wake up. You can't hurt a nightmare because all dreams are only imagination. They're only in your head, and they're not there when you wake up. So you can't wake up because I'm in charge now, and I don't want to disappear. My nightmare is the publisher people who want to make a contribution so they can say they made a contribution. And then we end up with mullets in there because they think mullets are funny, but it wasn't supposed to be about mullets. And now it's about mullets. And when it's in slow motion, they call it mullet time because the numbers get Came back from marketing that mullet time is the hook we needed to go big in the target demographic. And they're not even kidding. They say it all like serial killers with straight faces and smiles. My nightmare is the writers who want to make everything from the characters to the toasters talk, talk, talk all the time and express their feelings so they won't shut up. And the writers won't shut up either because they have feelings too. And I have to listen to them because they're not scared of me. And everyone should just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. But I don't see nightmares. 
nightmares anymore because I'm too scary for them. I take two pills every morning and one with every meal and four when I go to bed. And that makes me the scariest nightmare of all. This character is absolute comedy gold given the struggles that this game went through in its development. Uh, but I guess that is publishing for you. Now we can step out here and talk to the painter. Mm. Oh, hello. I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah? He's very proud of me. He says I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. Hmm. Well, I guess I'd better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that. I'd hate to be out there tonight. Yeah, so would I, but I have a feeling I'm going to. Ugh, look at this. Before it was just like storm clouds moving atop the mountains, but this... It seems to be growing darker. Darker as in black. I think even here, even after all we've been told, the darkness is still going to come for us. That's locked. Okay, well, I guess we'd better see about what's going on here, because uh, if Hartman is telling the truth about the power not working well here, well, we're in for a rough time. But this is such a cozy atmosphere. Just sitting in this cabin, I mean, a log cabin up in the mountains while the sound of thunder rumbles overhead. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm probably annoying people, but honestly, I don't even want to get a move on just because of how comfy this is. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Maybe that's the case. Maybe, maybe it doesn't feed power directly off of creative thoughts. Maybe it uses creative thoughts to get what it wants. Actually using creative types and the power that's within them naturally, instead of giving that power to them, to shape things in the way that it wants. Alright, uh, let's keep going. Oh, there's another one of those. You're right. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. Look, it's another QR code. Maybe somebody can scan this. I'm not sure if these would have been in the game in the beginning, or if maybe those were something that were added later. Wake. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Oh, the storm is upon us. And the inmates are running the asylum. And that's actually good for me. 
Uh, of course it's them. Okay, uh, where do we go? Uh, maybe we can- maybe we should start trying doors, like, across the way? No? Oh, there's a manuscript page right there. Huh. Look at that owl wings splayed out. Owls are so cool. Oh. That wasn't the hard tap. The crazy old fork hit her hard. If she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. Uh, wow. She actually took a shot to the head from a hammer. Uh, okay. These guys are a little less uh, innocent seeming, but I guess maybe she did have it coming. I had to office. He had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping them. Can't do that. Okay, these only go to Hartman's office then. I was hoping to explore. But I guess we'll get a prompt when we're able to unlock a door. I, I love that detail of the branches blowing the way they do when a storm is approaching. The photo on the wall caught my attention. Is that the kidnapper? Staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. So that's the... And that makes sense. This place caters to artists. This place draws artists for its power. That's what this is all about. Hartman is a pawn of this thing that lives in the lake. More. More of that guy's paintings. He had apparently been told to create the landscapes. The said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> he's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent, he's... Do you mean with you? No. very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut up of this. Just a recording. So that's how they did it. They never had her. They have no idea where she is. All of this was an attempt to gaslight me. But wait, 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 wait. That's another map. A map of the area. Oh, those red lines are roads. I thought they were circling things. Hmm. Seems familiar. Okay, let's get going. Barry? Barry? Ow! About time! <laughs> Man, I'm glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. 
I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that Fed gave me a real hard time. But I don't know where you were. That guy's crazy out. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. <laughs> I'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. Ah, uh, that's hilarious. Now... I've edited the first two parts of this series by now, and from looking back at it and from what we've seen, I'm starting to think that that Nightingale might also have some extra knowledge and some kind of... maybe some kind of ulterior motive here. It seems like he's trying to make sure that I die without getting to talk to anyone. Come on, let's see what's in here. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the... Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea... Hartman, shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just- Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. And that's him failing her. <laughs> that little smirk. Oh, uh, that is so deeply satisfying to you, huh? The dark presence will be on me in a moment. I had to find a way out. Look at these shadows creeping over the windows. Oh, let's keep going. Oh, we have no flashlight. We're entirely dependent on. No, come on. Come on. It's inching down the hallway towards us. Let's go. Don't move. Oh, there's objects flying. It's like uh, the power is off in parts of the building, but not all of it. Uh, let's get this generator going. Any safe spot will be will be useful. That's a very small area. Okay. But with this light on, we can at least start to get rid of these things. There we go. Let's wait until more of this is gone. All right, maybe once more. There's still kind of a lot down there. There we go. All right, I don't think we're going to be able to get anything or everything. But that's enough. Oh, and it finally has come true. We've reached the point of having a gun but no light. Oh, move, come on. If only I had my light, I could start destroying some of these barriers. But the flare... It's not gonna stop until it's consumed this entire place. No. All right. A whole bunch of possessed objects in there, no way through the door. What more can I do? Oh, I suppose I could use that flare. Oh, hate to use these up, but I guess it wouldn't have given it to me otherwise. Kaboom. Goodbye, bears. That's a shame. Those objects disappear from existence. And those are some really nice carved bears. Oh, there's the manuscript page. Let's keep going. You're not going to show me anything on that TV. Lights, lights, lights are on, lights are on, lights are on. I wonder if this flickering lamp would actually do anything. No! Let me guess, you're going to roll through those doors, right? And I'm going to have to get in here? Kaboom! How did I know? No kabooms yet? Now come on, do your other kaboom! You got some more kabooms for me? 
You're embarrassing yourself. You're ruining your big moment. And here you are. You know, you don't have to throw yourself every time. You could just roll. That would probably be easier. And see you, sucker. Uh, this guy's smug face is on every single wall I've come across. No, can't open up. Looks like I'm going to need your help one more time, ball boy. Yep. And much obliged. Oh, it's Barry. Barry could really use your help right now. Please slide that thing through the bars. Oh, a hedge maze. Beautiful. Thank you. Is this an upgraded light? Oh my god. Look at that. That was like a haunted house as it screams in agony upon death. Look, all kinds of lights flashing out from within, almost like the lightning of the storm has penetrated the place. We don't have a lot in the way of batteries, so I think I'm going to have to stand here for a little bit and replenish it. What is going on in there? Oh, I hope the other patients are safe, but I have a feeling I'll be dealing with them shortly. I don't have time for you guys. Uh, hang on, let me just read this plaque. Suspended. Lauren Miller, 1989. That looks like a diving helmet or a diving bell. Alright, um, this is probably going to kill me right now. Yep. So hard to maneuver. Yeah. Ow. Alright, come on. Just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh. Luckily, the terrain just barely saves me. Get in there. Yeah, real bad. We need flares, we need batteries. But now we're at least partially equipped to deal with this on our own. Uh, you know, I'm looking at this hedge maze now and all I can think about is, wow, this is going to wreak absolute havoc on the camera. My biggest enemy. Well, here we go. can hear something moving around inside here. Uh, so you met, huh? You become acquainted with them? Fortunately, I can hear them too! Actually, wait. You always gotta be wary of the one that's gonna come from behind you. Divide and conquer. That's the way to do this. Divide, conquer, and don't let yourself get cornered. Don't trust a meal. Okay, well, nice of you to tell me that. Could have put that in the woods somewhere, someplace I've already been. But it's helpful to know after I already figured out the whole plan. Also, I don't know what he knew I knew, but you would think he would have taken down the picture implicating him off the wall, right there in that main hallway. They're going to come from behind. I know it. It's the biggest trick in their book. No, you don't. There they come. Okay, flare out. Oh, there's a big boy here as well. Okay, uh, pop another flare. We're probably going to have to use another flashlight battery on you. But I'm not sure how many flares I have left. Get rid of you, just to reduce the potential incoming damage. And we gotta just start dumping as much as we can into you. Ah, I was wondering when you'd rejoin us. I wasn't sure where you'd went. There we go. All right, we made it out of there relatively... Oh, we are out of ammo. We have one bullet left, and that is not going to do us much good. Dead end. Okay, uh, what do we have in the way? No flares, one bullet. We have to move. There we go. But they're still there. 
This one's going to be Hartman, isn't it? I mean, the game did bother to subtitle this one. The dialogue from these taken. It's all, it, it's like it's remnants of themselves, but it still sounds like it's painting them to say it. it it's such a cool way to, oh, no, 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 no. All right, uh, birds, I'm actually going to need you to piss right off for now because I have way bigger problems. No. You battery, you're going to keep making your way toward me. Come on! Oh, I can't see anything, this camera. Okay, mag dump. Or sorry, chamber dump. Ugh. Can't see anything. Come on, keep going. I don't have a lot of ammo, so if this fails to kill you, I'm in trouble. Come on. Please just die. Please, birds, just die. No! No! Okay, bird's gone. One bullet left. And Hartman gone. But it looks like I get some kind of replenishment now. And Hartman's dead forever, which means he's gone from the plot, which means his smug face is no longer our problem. Although his legacy may live on through all those posters throughout town. Uh. Once again, we're walking along cliffs and out into the forest, are we? It's in moments like this that I really have to thank... We really should just be hopping that... Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh, they teased us with that for a moment, did they? All right. Uh, there's got to be something in this little shack over here. Yes, a shotgun and some rounds for said shotgun and a manuscript page. Seems kind of dangerous to keep all this stuff on prem, but eh, who am I to tell you how to run your business? Lightning is here, as are the swarms of taken birds. Ow. Yeah, there was not much I could do about that. Okay, flare, flare, flare. Oh, I don't have flares. I have the flare gun, but I don't have actual flares. Uh, which means my usual strategy isn't going to work here. You're done. One more. And goodbye. Which once again leaves me very short on ammo. Now that's never really been a big problem for me in this game. But resource management is starting to become a bigger deal here. I do really hope that's not going to become too much of an impediment. It's been fairly generous up until this moment. Ah! I was trapped, but you know what? Thank you for giving me a way out. You know, it's in moments like this I have to once again question just what is it that the darkness wants? Because obviously it wants me to finish the manuscript, but I think I talked about this last part. Why does it keep trying to kill me if it wants what I have? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Emil made Tom do it. Now, look, I forgot to address it before, but Odin and Tor, they referred to me as Tom, as Zane. She clearly had some connection. I'm still assuming this is the lamp lady. She clearly had some connection to him. And I guess so did Emil. This goes way back to the 60s. Now this thing, it's probably been here for a long time. But there must have been something special about this Thomas Zane. And clearly, I'm like some kind of distant counterpart to him. People clearly see me in him. No! Oh, come on. I have no flares, guys. You're gonna have to line up. Uh, three of you. Uh, I think I'll... Oh, no, I have one flare. 
There you go. Alright, line up. Line up. Come on. There you go. Yeah, it seems like it's really leaning us into a very flare gun based economy for the combat in this part. Giving us more flare gun than actual flares. Uh, but now that we know they're going to pull the trick of jumping out of these bushes, this whole garden is a lot more sinister, isn't it? The constant sound of the crows overhead. Uh, th this whole game, it just constantly feels like the inevitable is rushing up to meet me. The darkness feels like an inescapable force. A prison not just for the town, but for me, for my writing. Maybe representative of the prison Alan felt he was already in, unable to write. Ow! You're alive! Let's get yep. out of here. Can you open this gate? Maybe. Barry. Uh, well, I slammed it shut when the nasty showed up. And the key fits kind of loose in the lock, so, uh... Got it. It's going to be a defense segment. Barry, I'll find it. Don't worry about it. You're a big boy. Oh, looks like at least two big boys. Potentially three. Oh, there's a whole bunch of you. And a crow taking up, off. On, All right, I'm you on. guys get closer, please. You get down. You stay at bay. You die, Ugh. and I'm going to try and take shelter in this. All right, come on. we got to thin you out. That's what it's all about. You're going to charge if I turn my back on you for half a second. I need to I need to keep focusing the beam on you while reloading. Ch okay, pointing the beam at you does not break your charge. We you know that now, so you're going to have to die instantly. Barry, I'm really going to need you to hurry the process. Okay, let's go. Oh, come on. Reload. Reload. Ah, that missed, which means you're not going to die when I need you to. Okay, if you can get that open now, please. I'm just... Come on. Never mind. I guess I made it. <laughs> for the nearest. You're now leaving Bright Falls. Come back soon, sign. We're going to the Anderson farm. I knew you were going to say something like that. You know what? You owe me big time for this. When this is through, if we make it, I don't care what anybody says, I'm done with darkness. You're going to buy me a tanning bed as a gift, and I'm going to live in it. What? Excuse me, game? I beat the segment, but also I died, so it just does both. Okay, well, flare gun on you. Reload, reload, reload. Use this as cover. Flare gun on you. Should I actually, like, hold off on killing these guys? Seems real inconsistent the distances involved where a flare gun will actually kill. Should I hold off on killing them so that it won't spawn new ones? Or how does this work? Nope! Ugh. All right, where's you? There's you! Die, please. Thank you. That's it for flare gun ammo. There should be a guy back here who is vulnerable. Where is he gone? Yeah, you and your twig. A couple of regulars. A small boy. One more on you. And now here comes another heavy, which I really have no way of dealing with. So Barry, if you could open the freaking door. I just saw it pop open, so go.
easy, but that's fine, Barry. <laughs> oh, you got that right, Al. You're barking mad. You are by far the craziest... But maybe that's inevitable when you deal with crazy stuff like this. It helps. This is happening, Barry. Alice... They never had Alice. She's trapped in the darkness at the bottom of the lake, but she's not dead. Al, how can you know that? I know, Barry. I can... Al, I... No, listen. I can bring her back. I can find her. There's something special about this place. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. But there's a catch. The dark presence, whatever that thing is, twists it to its own ends. That's why all of this is happening. It's using my manuscript to take over everything. Al, I believe you. It happened to Thomas Zane before. It happened to the Andersons. I believe you. Crazy or not, you're not delusional. Weird shit's going down. That's a fact. I'm on board, man. I'm with you. The Andersons knew about it, but they were too far gone to tell me with all the drugs they were on. But they wrote it down. There's a message somewhere at their farm, Barry. We just need to find it. Look out! Oh, great. We're wrecking another car. Yeah, we're always losing everything, aren't we? Now we're trapped in the Mary! woods with no gun and no Mary! light. Oh, man, you're okay! Jeez, it's good to hear your voice! I was trying to get out of the car, but the ground gave way! Man, what a drop! And don't worry, your cutout is fine! Good to know. Get that! Are you okay? I hit some bushes, didn't get a scratch! There's no way you can climb down, though! It's like a sheer wall! Wow, that's actually really good sound design in the way your voice echoes off the mountain. Uh, oh, but Al, there's something moving down here. Barry, it's a taken. Use a flare, Barry. Oh, yeah. Barry, are you all right? <laughs> I'm good, Al. I'm great. Guess you never messed with anyone from New York City before, huh? There it is. That must be the Anderson farm. Oh no. They built their farm out of set pieces. What were they thinking? You're gonna have to find your way around to the farm now. I'll be waiting. Alright, well, Barry, at least Barry has my stuff. Me, okay? Ow! I'm not staying here! It's suicide! I'm going to the farm! I'm gonna go ahead and secure the area! You can catch up! Don't worry about it! I'm on the case! Now he's Rambo. This would turn into a disaster if I didn't catch up with Barry. I can see a manuscript page glowing down there. Well, if he has my stuff, then he's currently actually in better shape than I am. Oh man, I'm really starting to get annoyed with these heavies. They're just like not fun to fight. I found that's true for, like, a lot of games that I played. I always end up hating, like, these bullet-spongy, or in this case, light-spongy enemies. I just don't like... Oh, great. I have no way of dealing with this. Yes, thank you for telling me, game. Out of my way. Generator, generator, generator. What is this? Okay, for a light. In we go. Maybe we can find something here. Haha. -ha. But that's not stopping it. Let's grab this manuscript page. I was really hoping we'd be able to find, like, flares or something here. Uh, this game just loves taking away my gear, and... I think we're going to lose that light very shortly. I guess we could trick some of these items into going over here. Look, if we get this to launch it even now, right, we can trap it inside by going like that. Ah, uh, but it's not going to come for us. Anyway, nope, there it goes. Alright, whatever, we gotta run. We don't really have a good way of dealing with these things. I mean, does the dodge mechanic actually work on them when they get thrown? Not to mention, a lot of these objects are too big to effectively dodge. We really have to rely on the terrain and things not being behind the camera. 
Okay, what's over here? I'm getting all turned around. And it's in times like these where the very limited sprint is very, very annoying. Are we going to be able to... Okay. Only problem, this light doesn't look to be powered, and it doesn't look like one that's been powered for quite a long time. Well, we're gonna have to follow these cables, are we? Oh, that rail track is collapsed, which means it's probably up here. Hello? Uh, the camera just locked up on me for a second and I couldn't move. Yep. Oh, come on! Grab ourselves a manuscript page, and we have a generator. Uh, this thing honestly looks like it might spontaneously combust if we decided... Look, generators are not supposed to do this. I could sense the movement in the woods ahead. Facing the enemy without a weapon was dangerous, but I had no choice. Okay, so I can keep them at bay. What if I go forward? Will that actually reveal any, any paint? I mean, they bothered to put that whole area off to the side. Yeah, there really doesn't appear to be anything over here. But look, I don't have a gun, which means I can't fight Taken, but I will be able to destroy those objects, at the very least, which seems to be most of this problem in the old mining areas. All right. Trust no one in the dark? Well, that's what I've learned. And now we're back here, and now we are dealing with Taken again. It's not just going to be... It's not just going to be those flying objects, which means we have to rely on moving. Moving in generators, moving in generators, moving in generators. That's all there is to it. Come on. Come on! Oh, we're not going to be able to do this. This isn't going to work. No, get, stop, get off of the thing! Uh, just kill me. All right, let's try this again. I, I really just don't think there's going to be... Yeah, all right, you're coming for me. If you can throw stuff, I really don't think there's actually going to be... Well, there's batteries here. I really don't think there's going to be any way to deal with you. No, get off! I was trying to pick up the batteries, not grab the thing. There's a heavy among you. Batteries already out, so I can't even keep you at bay anymore. We got to make a run for there. That generator is not going to work. Ow. Of course, if I'm running forward, I can't do anything about what you're throwing at me. There was something off to the side there, but I can't grab it. Just run. Just run. Uh, maybe I should... Maybe my entire run should be comprised of dodges. Maybe that would work better. Oh, thank God. Finally. Oh, your awful cardiac health is really becoming a drain in these areas. driving away from the farm, headed in the same general direction as I was. For all I knew, it was Barry, caught in the consequences of leaping before looking. Where would... Okay, first of all, Barry was instructed to come here. And also, how would Barry have gotten a car in the woods? I mean, I suppose that could be him, but... You know, we've got to remember, the FBI is still looking for us. Are you an upgraded flashlight? Okay, thank you. Thank you, that would have been really useful two seconds ago, and I'm not sure what the detriment would have been in having that be the case. Uh, from what we've seen wandering around this place, it's starting to seem like there's probably more people hanging out in the woods of this town than in the town itself. Which would lend itself to all these mixing persons cases. Campers and fishermen and moonshiners and poachers. The car was heading for the cabin up ahead. It wasn't far. If it was Barry, I would see the damage soon. You know, you're really... You're really heaping a lot of assumed incompetence onto the man who's saved your life several times here. Your life and your freedom. trying to deliver each page to the right time and place. 
I'm trying to show you how the story goes. I had seen glimpses of the light before. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange spaceman or a diver in a bulky suit. He was the one who'd been placing the pages on my path. Okay, well that pretty much confirms that it's our old boy Tommy Zane. Uh, why, why, why would you even, like, think of anything besides Diver's suit, considering the repeated images we've seen of it? But we are back in Potra country, which means we once again have to keep our light pointed downward to avoid these traps. I wonder if the Taken can step on them if they've been made vulnerable. Uh, but the grass is very tall in places here. Man, what are they trying to catch? A giant millipede? Look at that place up ahead. The way the beam of light cuts through it, leaving it s silhouetted. There's so many old ruins off in these woods, but I should be making a run for this generator. Maybe I'll be able to get this one in time. There we go. Because that thick darkness is all around it. This looks like it was made of stone. Is that something that would be done? I mean, the oldest buildings around here have all been related to the mining company, but it doesn't seem like this would be one of those. Hello. Yeah, unfortunately for you, I just got a new heavy-duty flashlight, so... Oh, that's right, I don't have a gun. Huh. Well, uh, hang on. Maybe I can get you to walk into this here bear trap? No, no. Come this way. Oh, you won't. You won't. Okay, so these things are entirely to my detriment. They do not help me at all. And now that I've fallen down here, what does that do for me? Nothing? Okay, climb out, climb out, climb out, climb out. Climb out! That's what I get for exploring. Okay, well, now you're trapped down there. I assume you can't climb. Okie doke. At the very least, I can make you go away by standing in here. And back into the forest with us. See, it's one thing in horror games to leave you vulnerable. I mean, obviously that's something that you want to do as a horror game. You want to make the player feel like they're not in control. Like the forces around them are so much stronger, and so you have to resort to using your wits to survive. The problem is that the rest of the game revolves around those tools, and there aren't really a lot of alternatives. Okay, keep running, keep running. I have to keep my... See, if I'm sprinting, I also can't see what's behind... or what's below us. I can't see whether there's any traps on the ground nearby. And if these things aren't going to pull their weight... Oh, look at that image of all their silhouettes on the horizon. If the traps aren't going to pull their weight and start grabbing some Taken, then I really don't know what good they are for. They're just in my way. That would actually be really interesting as a mechanic here, having to weaken them and then sort of bait them into walking in certain directions. Oh, go away. Around the rock? We can't go around the rock. Okay, we need to run right through you guys then. Starting to dodge every time I try to sprint and trying to sprint every time I try to dodge. I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. So who is our mystery driver? Yes, thank you, camera. Hello? Anybody here? Ah! Barry! Ah! Ah! No! Danny, you're not! Ah! Please! Okay, that sounds serious. That sounds serious. No! No! no. Come on. I know You're not Barry. You were in jail the other day. I went to the farm again for the moonshine, you know? It makes you see. They're, they're not going to miss it. They're in the loony bin. My buddy, Danny, I lost him. Something's gone wrong with him. Uh, it's not him. Like a real bad follow-up to a real good movie. The best friend's suddenly the bad guy. Who, who wrote this crap anyway?
Okay, there's self-awareness, and then there's this. Uh, just had to get one last jab in, didn't he? Yeah, I remember him. He was the drunk from the... from the... lockup. I've run through every possible course in my head. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story, and it's going to kill her, and me, and everybody in this town. No one will survive. Darkness will consume everything. This is what it's wanted all along. It will be free, unstoppable. It used Alice to get to me, dangled her in front of me to keep me going. It was never going to release her. I'm going to change this. I'll escape. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. This feels like a terrible risk, but it's the only way to save Alice. I'll be bound by the events of the story just as much as anyone else who's been woven into it. The story must stay true for this to work. There have to be victims along the way. Near escapes. Cliffhangers. In a horror story, it can't be certain that the hero will succeed or even survive. He almost has to die. I'll write my own escape into the story next. I need help. Zane's going to be the one who will help me. I'll make it happen. Okay, now we've got kind of a weird recursive narrative going on here, if that really is the case. And if I'm understanding it correctly... Zane seemed to be the one helping me, guiding me, placing these manuscript pages, and yet... I've written him into the story? I agree. Which is why you're not allowed to stay in the house. Gotta back up, eliminate your darkness, and bang, 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 bang. Let me guess. Danny, huh? Wait, so am I to understand that you, like, climbed out a window, closed it behind you, and then went back around the house to come back upstairs? Ah, oh, whatever. Let's grab some shotgun ammo. I don't see a shotgun anywhere in the cabin itself, though. Uh, but we do have some flares. Mighty useful. Now that guy upstairs, he said it... Door was locked. Great. He said it makes you see. Um... Hi, I have a solution for your problem. Thank you. Well, thank you for delivering it to me. That looks fresh. Alright, but I keep getting distracted. He had said that it makes you see the moonshine. Is that maybe going to become an integral part of our strategy? Drinking the, moon the moonshine to see something? Uh, even though I know to expect it now, that breathing when we're in an area with the, with the stashes always makes me nervous. Because I'm always here for a little while before I actually notice it. Anything in the outhouse up ahead? Uh, well, there's something, but nothing I need. If Barry wasn't up here, he was probably in trouble down at the farm. For a moment, I felt bad for doubting him. After all, I made it this far myself. But Barry was Barry. You are an atrocious friend, and he's a really, really good friend. He has had our back to such an absurd degree through this entire thing. And you just write him off as an idiot, even though he hasn't really done anything stupid. Uh, can we get in this vehicle if we need it? We can. But it seems like this is a stash house, even though the darkness is quite thick here. Alright, we have five flares, one flashbang. I just heard a louder than average thud. More flashbangs, very, very good to have. Now hopefully the combat will start to get a little less irritating. Now that heavies aren't quite as much of a threat in the face of these things. Nothing really up here, though. Alright, next up is the Firewatch Tower. I wonder if this wouldn't be a cabin uh, that maybe the person watching would live in? I mean, that looks like maybe a ranger's jeep. 
But then again, don't don't park rangers usually sleep in the fire watchtower? I mean, isn't that like the point is that they're always there if something needs their attention? Uh, that appears to be Ash's car from Evil Dead. Oh well. I mean, it's not like we haven't already had a few good vantage points, but this will probably be by far the best. I must say, though, it really is a win for the overall level design and world design in this game that from so many places we can actually look around and see what the entire chapter will have in store. That's something I really, really like about it. Oh, a hunting rifle. Plenty of rifle rounds. Well, as I'm sure everyone's noticed, that storm we all felt coming is finally here. The boys at the weather service reckon it'll last until morning at the very least. Uh, pertaining to that, let me uh, read that missing persons alert again. The sheriff's department's still looking for a Caucasian woman, 30 years old, slim and blonde with blue eyes. She may be lost in the woods, and it's possible she's been injured in a car accident. If you see her, please make sure you get her indoors and call the sheriff. It's bad weather to be caught out in, so if you see someone in the area who maybe looks a little confused, give him a hand, all right? <clears throat> this is Pat Main on KBF-FM, hoping you're all safe and warm. Unfortunately, not all of us get to be. Even if we do keep going between areas that look like we could stay safe and warm. Ah, oh, great, here they come. Well, tell you what, rather than fight you guys, I'm just gonna sprint on through and get in the car. Which should make you guys quite a bit easier to deal with. Yep. And that big ol' axe, or shovel, I guess, probably should have cleaved right through me. But whatever. Man, that is so annoying. Even the car's headlights take forever to do anything about heavies. But I'm not gonna leave without finishing you off. It takes so long to back up, too. Kaboom. Oh my god. God, you've destroyed like half this car's condition. Thank you and good night. Uh, maybe I should be looking for a new one already. Ow. Hello, do I spy a coffee thermos? Uh, I still don't know what they do, but it is a collectible, which means I'm willing to put my life in immense danger to go after it. Uh, I'm starting to think I should go back and get that jeep from the other house. This thing took such a beating already. And it's done. Okay, now's the job for a flashbang. Okay, I'm going to need all of you to cluster, please. Thank you. Boom. It didn't even kill you. Unbelievable. Honestly, the biggest problem with their, these heavies isn't even their health. It's the fact that it, even under, like, the best circumstances, it takes, like, half an hour to get the dark off of them. Kill you. And I'm not even going to bother. You know, we got to learn from the first driving segment that we shouldn't really be worrying all that much about killing every enemy. Areas like this are big enough that it's just not our problem. I think this is leading back up the way we came. I think, okay, this thing's a little bit more maneuverable and a little bit more suited to this space. So I think we take it down here and eventually we should come upon a site with a lot of construction equipment, shouldn't we? Uh, but I don't want to go off road. These things do not interact well with the terrain at all, see? And I have a feeling we're gonna get damaged by all the bouncing around and hitting the ridges. Okay, so it can generate explosions now. Cool. That's great for us. Out of my way, please. Oh, now's not the time to be wibbly-wobbling. Come on. Well, since this is going to be a shorter driving segment, 
Perhaps I should put in the work of clearing this field out. I mean, if this car is not going to be with us for very long anyway... I can't have to have a look if maybe if this bend in the fence wouldn't be passable, but no, I think this is just meant to be the sign that we are not getting a vehicle through here. Oh, that's just awesome. So you're a thing now, as are you. Oh, it always puts one right next to me. It's never, there's always the ones that it doesn't show right away. Come on. Die. Alright, so what are we doing about you? Uh. We could flashbang you potentially. I have no idea how something like this gets explained to insurance. Well, at least there seems to be power on at this place in some capacity. Probably been abandoned for as long as those guys have been up at Hartman's office. Looks like we have the run of the place. A lot of different buildings to explore. But that means there's a lot of wide open space that's going to be very unsafe for us. And very likely to be the site of some bullfight bosses relating to the heavy machinery that populates this farm. Another stash. Now look, I'm pretty sure at this point, and have been for a while, that the lamp lady is the one that's leaving these things for me. But when I hear that breathing when I enter places like this, I just can't help but think that... Nope. I can't help but think... Uh, it's funny farmer dialogue. I can't help but think that she's hiding somewhere just off camera watching me collect this stuff. Uh, and this is the heavy-duty flashlight, huh? Come on. And a couple rifle rounds should be the end of you. Ah, uh, is that their stage? They held their concerts right here at the farm, huh? If their dialogue is to be believed, they've kind of always been aided by the power in the lake. Used to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't really sunk in until I saw the stage. Ow! Run! They're coming! There's too many of them! God damn! Glad you decided to go it alone. Uh, is that a new flashlight? Oh, great. Oh, but wait, is this going to be like a catharsis moment? Because, no, come on, pick it up. Hello? All right, come on, toss a flashbang. And bang! Oh, all of you at once. Another flash out. Goodbye, heavy. Oh, man, the flashbangs, like, don't even work on these guys anymore. Bang. Bang! Oh, and I just get the achievement, Taken Season. Oh yeah, okay, after all that, this is going to be one of those catharsis moments where we get to really start laying into them. Okay, I guess standing here actually does count as a checkpoint, uh, but it does disappear sometimes. What? What kind of problems are you having, Barry? You better. Oh, I see. So it swings around. Uh, here they come. Toss out. And let's get that stuff off of you. Bang. Bang. Oh, it's like watching an audience rush the stage. The revolver feels more sluggish in this part, for some reason. Alright, uh... 
Get you guys down. I've yet to figure out if the pyrotechnics at the end of the stage actually do anything to you. But they're certainly a nice way to punctuate our little our little get together. Okay, that makes them go away, but unfortunately I don't want them to go away right now. I want them to just keep coming so I can kill them. Ah, uh, here comes a bunch. See, on the one hand, I want them to gather up close so that I can do something cool like that. Barry, you're kind of awesome now. Nope. Ugh, come on, come on, come on. Turning around is so hard. Because, see, Alan doesn't turn. When, when you're getting attacked, Alan doesn't turn with your camera. And because of the way the camera works in this game... No, I won't let you die, Barry. Because of the way the camera works in this game, everything is behind you all the time. Uh, we're gonna need some more ammo soon. Come on, don't be shy. Climb on up, fan. And there you go. Uh, I definitely like this extra upgraded flashlight a lot more, and I hope we never lose it. But knowing this game, we most definitely will. Back into here. Checkpoint reached. You guys gone. Which keeps you from flooding the stage, even though I kind of want you to now. Uh, Barry, can you please try and save the fireworks for when they're close? It makes for a much more climactic moment. For example, when they get real close, like this. Uh, I love the flashbangs for these big, like, multi-kills. And it looks like that's all. Rock and roll capital of America. I mean, it is now. We just made it that. Oh, look at this. They've even got an audience of adoring fans set up. I wonder if that's not who they were playing to mostly in their later years. Huh, now, here's the question. Do I take the shotgun or keep the rifle? A whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, I'm thinking I keep the rifle, considering it has the greatest abundance of ammo, or... How much do we have for this? How much How much is in this? Man, sometimes the holding down E to pick stuff up is not very responsive. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of ammo for this. Let's go. Alright, you've got a flashlight, I've got a flashlight. I wonder if you'll actually be... Oh, thank God, the cardboard cutout is safe. You carried that thing See, through the woods? Seller, no reason to worry. Your cutout's good as new, right where I left it. I'll come back for it once we have the place secure. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. We huh. need to get this thing moved out of the way. This is as far as I got before they ambushed me. Great. Looks like I'm going to be doing some climbing on more rickety old structures. But as I was saying, this game is constantly interrupting me. If you have a flashlight and I have a flashlight, I wonder if you'll actually be helpful in combat. Although, honestly, I feel like you've earned your helpfulness badge for a lifetime after that. I mean, that must have been like, what, 30 to 50 taken? And you actually probably killed more of them than I did. Yep. And a yep. Hey, I think Alan Wake here has something to say. Uh, what's that, Al? Ooh, I'm Alan Wake. I'm always right about everything, and if I don't get my way, I'll sulk all day long. I'm always intense and moody. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend, Barry, to carry me. But that's okay. I can just take him for granted. I think I see what you did there. Yeah, it was pretty good. You want me to do my imitation of Barry Wheeler? No? Thought so. Okay, you don't get to quip, because that was an accurate representation of how you've been treating him up until this point. Huh. 
You know, I really thought this thing was going to end up getting used as a battering ram. I suppose it still could be if it gets taken at any point. Yeah, we'll just trust all of that to stay suspended where it is. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al? They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? They really look at did. All this stuff. They must have done okay for themselves. So how come I never heard of these guys before? And this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Speaking of TV... Sleep. We all spend uh, a few oh, night spring. in soft embrace, somewhere it's between memory. fantasy and Hey, oblivion. remember when I got you that gig? But your first real writing job. What got you started? Life. Ooh, is this one of your episodes? Versa. You wrote for this show. Tonight's episode. Now that would have been kind of a lame one, although with an interesting idea. Except they mentioned the guy in the diving suit. They're seemingly referencing this story. And so, I don't know, it's almost like... It's almost like all of these are talking about us. Huh, maybe that's a different lens to go back and look at these things through. I wonder how the idea of quantum immortality comes into this. I mean, look, this whole game has been one long conversation about the nature of what's real and what isn't. So I really have to wonder where it's going with this, and if these Night Springs episodes aren't meant to add even yet another layer to this. Learning that Alan wrote for them... Well, that sort of suggests that these are topics the that Viking have been on his mind for some time. Almost like a battering ram. Okay, I can take a hint. Oh, we're actually full up on batteries. I feel like I've just destroyed a piece of history, but okay. Rock and roll history, anyway. Yeah, wow, look, they actually did go on nationwide tour. Howdy, bud. Sorry, we're closed. Yeah. I, I really, really hope we never lose this new flashlight. I mean, look, it's everything I've been asking for. Quick destruction of shadows, very wide beam. It actually, it seems to affect them from farther away as well. Come on. Thank you. Yep. There was one more hiding behind the hay bale. Well, 
step right up. Got plenty of ammo for all of you now. Courtesy of Odin and Thor, who apparently kept all bullets and live rounds around, you know, for their rock shows. And I guess they also managed to get their hands on a sizable stash of flashbangs as well. Uh, maybe from the time the feds tried unsuccessfully to besiege the place? Barry, where'd you go? Oh, it's another one of you speedy boys. Alright, shotgun. Because you're gonna have more health too, aren't you? Oh, you're hard to pin down. But, as usual, the environment does it for me. And we learn that three blasts from the shotgun is what it takes to get you down. I think we can make it through here, Al! Through there. That doesn't seem like a good idea. But then again, what has? Wait, is there a manuscript page there? It looks like there's light coming through. No, I guess that's just supposed to be moonlight. Avoid the downed power lines. And now you're just straight up taking cars. Well, that's great. Uh, do I have any flashbangs left? I do not, but I do have flares still. All right, focus on the heavies first. That was not the shotgun, but I suppose it worked just the same. All right, start getting you guys down so that I can focus on you when need be. Oh, oh wow, you actually did go down faster. All right, shotgun. You know it's always going to be the hardest when it is just a straight up fight, when everyone's lined up in front of you. That's always when they come in force and they're just going to try and rush you. All right, you regular guys aren't worth two shotgun shells each when there's revolver ammo about. I would much rather save that for the heavies. The guys who I really need to kill right away. Look at you, Barry, standing under the light. Give me some of that checkpoint action. Man, this place, this light indoors is almost too bright. Those geezers had quite a production going on. Oh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm going to start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. Hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm going to take a closer look at this stuff. Can you buy alcohol online? Well, I'm pretty sure by nature you can't buy moonshine online. You keep talking about how great this stuff is. You've already sampled some, haven't you? The door was barred from the other side. I'd have to find another way. Yeah, this is really just vomiting a lot of light back into my face at close range. Be careful, Al! I kind of wonder if maybe this game wouldn't benefit from going into first person when you're indoors. Oh, and on the recording, with all the compression and lowered contrast. Right, I'm gonna need you to back right off, please. Uh, come on. Yeah, every little aspect of the controls just feels sluggish sometimes and unresponsive. Like, even the, even the time between shots. Like, if I don't click a certain way, it won't register the next one. It's got to be timed in just such a way. Anything on these shelves? No. Ah, another of you. Now, if I go to pick you up, yes, you do count as batteries. tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deerfest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. 
Actually, Pat, we've been real busy with other stuff. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the uh, usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know, uh, a lot more of it. Now, is it just me, or does Deerfest get wilder every year? People seem to be more drunk, at least, or they start earlier and younger. Oh, it's definitely not just you, Pat, but definitely, Pat. Hey, I'm talking here, Thornton. Uh, oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Not just me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wilder, Pat, but actually most of the trouble seems to be coming from grown men. People who ought to know better, you know? Kids are doing fine this year. Well, that's nice to hear, at least. Boys, I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to your patrol. Sure thing, Pat. Yeah, sure thing, Pat. Great. Well, there will be at least two fewer drunks this year. You can find their bodies, or one of their bodies, up at that one cabin. You hear that music? I could see the building that had to be the Anderson's home on the other side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods. Yep. Ah, oh, this thing has boss fight written all over it. <laughs> Look, it's already bouncing up and down in anticipation. Okay, how... Oh, it's giving me that pre-boss fight stock up as well. How many flashbangs do I have? None. None, and flashbangs are the best thing for these things. Yep! Flare! I wonder, will it actually avoid me if I use the flares? I mean, it seems to be running, but it's got to use the entire field in order to turn around. And you've got flunkies as well. Beautiful. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, I really have to, like, hammer that mouse button in order for you to do the rapid fire. Well, firing. Otherwise, it'll just get stuck and come out slower. That's you gone. Now, what about you? This will do nothing for me. Yeah, eat it. Eat that flare. We've got to load up multiple batteries at a time, too. And here comes Billy Bob. Well, Billy Bob... Well, Billy Bob's real mad that I broke his giant harvester. And Billy Bob's pretty giant himself, so... He needs that giant harvester, or he just can't fit. This has been another episode of Farm Simulator. This is exactly what farming is like. The kind of problems you face in agriculture. Looks like we've still got a ways to go before we can make our way over there. And where has Barry gotten off to again? silo key. Wait, can we get back there? No. This is so cool that they did this to their own property. Even their farmhouse looks like something out of, like, Whiterun or something. Uh, Al? Is that you out there, buddy? Yeah, it's me. Hang on. Hey, let's go, man. 
I feel like it's constantly pushing me along. The cameras are constantly like getting in the way so I can't look at the things I want to look at. And with this new light, like even though it's great in combat, Coming. I, I feel like it's just vomiting so much bloom back into my face. How do I do this? That it's like, I don't, I don't know. I can't get a good look at anything. We should feel right at home then. Let's have another push. Come on, one more gig. Let's do this thing. Huh. Looks like somebody got bored halfway through. Or couldn't go any further and decided screw it. Old gods know the truth. Yeah, I had begun to suspect that. Not quite a home they've got in there. You waiting for me to do the honors? Well, okay. The lights are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. You say that, but it sounds like there's somebody here. I definitely just heard footsteps. Oh, see, this is such a nice environment, but I can't see it because my light is too bright. One of their bedrooms over here. Please get out of my way, Barry. Thank you. Uh, the rest of this place is falling apart, but man, this place is just as they left it, huh? Look, they even built themselves a stage right in their own living room. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. Huh, and they've got fireworks inside here. You know, this place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were in the booby hatch. That's actually an excellent point. How do we know that it's stayed like this? How do we know somebody isn't living in Come here on, right now? On, huh? I mean, it would be very easy, right? Uh, here's the other one's room. Ah, uh, and a set of twin beds. But then again, I guess the band used to consist of more people, right? This place is actually a lot cozier now. Lights on, thunder overhead, music filling the halls. Can you hear that, Al? Music? Of course. We need to find where it's coming from. That's the message the Andersons talked about. That's the whole reason we're here. Lady of the Light? Um, that's gotta be what's your face, the crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right. Must be. Okay. We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey, Al. Lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry. This is... Yeah. What the hell? I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. <laughs> I, I love how he brought the thing inside. Write ten books a year, and and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What do they put in this stuff? 
feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. I just miss her, Barry. I just want her here with me. I know, Al. I know. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay. What is this? Wait. Oh, I'm not controlling. I'm seeing this in a first person perspective. Alice, I'm coming. It's all right. I'm coming. It was a crazy drunken dream. And yet, it was more than that. It was the truth. A suppressed memory unearthed by the Anderson's moonshine. I was there, an out of body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls, the night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. I Look. remembered being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. And yet, look. The lights are on up there at the lodge, almost peeking over the shoulder of the cabin itself. Almost like it was placed there specifically to observe this cabin. thinking I caught a glimpse of her form underwater sinking into the darkness <sighs> diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night after that the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript <sighs> I couldn't find her in all that blackness I must have thought she drowned Jagger had Alice, Alice, and so she had me. Alice! <coughs> I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. And here's where the manipulation begins. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me, made me her puppet. This is you opening the door all the way. She must be here somewhere. Maybe upstairs in the study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. Alice! You'll laugh at the whole thing together and put it behind you. Alice? She's not here. You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you write. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. You can write her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice, 
and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I'm here. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my partner a long time ago. She looks so old. I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. I wrote it. It's my fault. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. Busted. Okay, so we went in the space of that part from knowing nothing to now knowing basically everything. And I guess what's what the brothers meant when they said that the moonshine, or rather the drunk set meant when he said that the moonshine makes you see. Uh, but I have a feeling we're going to be spending the next part in a cell. Well, unless he has another escape to write himself. I actually really like that idea. Being trapped at the typewriter in service to this demonic thing. But being able to use the labor she was using him for to write his own escape. That is so cool. And as far as atmosphere goes, I absolutely adore that whole sequence at the lodge it's just such a cozy space and yet one where you're trapped because not just because you're trapped there and unable to leave but also because it's another time in this game where you're put into a box knowing what's coming where no one else believes that it's coming although i suppose we found out that he did know it was coming and thought it could be kept at bay hartman was in on this this thing actually Somehow, it manages to keep the townspeople in service to it. Although, I, I guess he thought he was using it rather than the other way around? I don't know. Now, I'm still confused as to the role of Zane in this story. Like, is he a real thing? Is he just some kind of representation of something that Alan had written? I don't know. We saw some things from his perspective at the end there, implying that there's things happening with him off-screen. So is he a character with agency, or is he just a plot device that Alan has written into the story? I had a really difficult time with the commentary on this one, and to be honest, I'm still having difficulty now. Just because I feel like, in this episode more than any other, I'm constantly being hurried along by the story, being hurried along by combat. 
And whenever I'm not being hurried along, I'm constantly waiting for dialogue to finish. But, you know, I gotta say, this episode, maybe more than any of the others, did a great job at building up this world. Building up the quirkiness and actual heart when it comes to some of these characters. I really liked how it both expanded on and humanized uh, the, the two brothers, as well as our relationship with Barry. I mean, listen to that music. We got to hear what they used to be like back in the glory days. Finding out that they know more than they let on, and even in this crazy state that they find themselves in, they're still, well, I guess among the most sane people in town because they're aware of what's going on, and they know the right mindset to approach this world from, and they're, they're happier for it and almost being persecuted for it. I feel like here is where we start to see the strengths of the writing in this game come together. Because we're starting to see that all the answers were in front of us all along. While everyone else is dismissing us as crazy, we've been dismissing other characters as crazy, and all we had to do was listen. You know, it's only now that I'm starting to realize, even though that kind of talk has been around us for the entire game, it wasn't until we found ourselves in amongst the loonies that we were kind of forced to learn their language. And only then did we finally see what they were saying. But if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.